Hi everybody. What's up? Welcome to uh, Flick My Chart. Well, actually, it's not. You're not flicking my chart. You're flicking his chart. I'm going to flick my chart. So this show is going to be about your flick chart journey. Tell us about it a little bit. Uh, the journey of me. Uh, yeah, what's flick chart and? Oh, let me tell you what flick chart. Yeah, is. Well, why are you why are you doing this? Uh, flick chart is a uh, website uh, that you can utilize to. Uh, Make a list, so to speak, of your favorite films of all time, or your least favorite films of all time, or your favorite films in certain genres. Go to flickchart.com, make an account, it's easy, and then uh, just start, they'll hit you with two movies, and you can say, I like this one more than this one, or you can hit the, I haven't seen this one, and they'll replace it with another movie. You keep doing this for like 10 years, <laughs> and then you are pretty much set, and whatever's in your uh, top 20 is probably still going to be way off, but you can adjust it, and it's, uh, it's a fun website if you're obsessed with movies and lists, as I am. Oh, it's funny, is like, I, I think I was the one that told you about you it. You totally did. I remember coming across it, and playing with it and having fun with it and thinking you know who would really love this yeah my buddy Jeff. you weren't wrong <laughs> yeah I got in during you know basically the beta stage uh, so uh, I'm uh, one of the uh, originals I, or not I don't know I don't know if that was a a title, but I'm gonna take it and yeah, give it to OG. myself. Uh, yeah, I've been. I am the fifth uh, biggest user of Flick Charts based on their uh, user. He's uh, actually numerics. listed. Actually yeah. listed on the page. Uh, uh, McJeffrey and my uh, avatar is Samurai Cop. And Samurai Appropriate. Cop. Yeah, it's a really good movie. That's what is this? What, what is this show? Why? why oh, you tell me what we're doing. So essentially, I thought to myself, you know, Jeff loves to do this Flick Chart thing. I do. Let's see if we can find out a way to turn that into a show. Okay. And so one of the things you were telling me is that as of late, mm. you've been... Uh, well, the whole Cinemia thing fell apart. Yes. So now you're not as going to be seeing as many movies as you used to. No, because I'm not made out of money. Mm. Mm. Basically, I've been taking to... Uh, Flick Charts actually has a group on the Facebook page. And each week I've been handpicking a few movies, say, hey, everybody, these movies interest me. Which one should I see? And I put it up in a poll, and then I give them 24 hours to give me an answer, and then I get an answer, and that's the movie I see that week. So where, again, do you go to be able to join in on this polling? Uh, you go to Flick Charters on Facebook. I was gonna say it's, a, it's a group on Facebook? It's a group on Facebook. Flick Charters. Flick Charters. We'll put a link somewhere on the screen yeah, here. It's like fun. over here or there or something like that. Yeah, and you Well, should... we won't put a link. We'll just put the name on there. Put it right and then here. I'll put a link in the description down below. Okay, so I'm in week two of this because it's been week two since the cinema of fiasco. Mm. And uh, two weeks ago, I watched Everybody Knows. It was up against Apollo 11 and Greta. And that's the new uh, one, Javier Bardem and Penelope Cruz, and it was great. This, this week, I only had two movies because it was a big Captain Marvel release week. And uh, it was Birds of Fortune, which is from the director who made Embrace of the Serpent, which was a well-regarded movie a couple of years back. And, of course, Captain Marvel. That one ended in a dead heat tie. Oh, wow. So, I instead of... So, so what do you say that the Flick Charter group is mainly consist of? Because, obviously, you have your Tune Charters group, which is a bunch of music... I guess you would Enthusi say kind of... They're enthusiasts, right. but they're not, it's, they're not necessarily populists. Uh, who they love, they love... Flick Charters is is a, a great grab bag of people. You got the you got snobs. You got just people who enjoy Joe Six Pack. The, oh, Joe Six Pack. I can name names. I'm not going to. <laughs> um, but there's a great mix, and that, so it's fitting that something like Captain Marvel and Birds of Fortune would end up tying in a dead heat. Whereas I put that poll up on my Facebook page, Captain Marvel wins. <laughs> right, right. Like, yeah, it's ridiculous. And I will never get to experience Birds of Fortune, which I will be experiencing this evening. I saw Captain Marvel, obviously. So when it when it ends up in a tie like that, I see both. You see both, okay? Uh, or I just determine I'm not gonna see either. <laughs> <laughs> that's I, that's because I could give myself the tiebreaker, but you know what? People actually, and if I did, I was gonna do Captain Marvel because I feel like I was gonna see Captain Marvel regardless because I'm a. I'm a fool. Yeah. Uh, I'm or a slave to the Marvel machine. <laughs> so uh, and I think at a certain point, this may go up before the Captain Marvel review we, we did. Okay. Um, so 
We it, it may be already available. Either case, it will be available. I'll have it linked at the end. It's or very whatever exciting. The case is. Yeah. It's something to look forward to. We also or gotta so- post that video about your cinemia, the cinemia stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you got. <laughs> Tons of content. You I just do. have to put it out there yeah. in the ether. It's it's very it's very Jeff heavy too. I know. <laughs> I'm gonna start actually thinking about my image and brand. <laughs> so yeah, we saw Captain Marvel. I'm seeing Birds of Fortune. I got four movies on the slate for consideration this week, and none of them are actually the wide releases. So before we get into that, oh, let's sure. talk let's talk about Captain Marvel some more. So you ended up liking Captain Marvel. I thought it was good. And so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna. You waited. I know you had to, like, it was, like, against all your OCD tendencies to to not flick that chart, uh-huh. flick your chart at at the end of the movie during the credits. Sure. So you, you had some willpower, so I appreciate that. Well. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually flick your chart. I'm going to flick my chart. And right now. It, all right. The first... Match is always the pivotal one because it sets the pace. Yeah, because basically, uh, if you go against it, it's generally going to give it a, a negative. Either start at the bottom, middle, or uh... well, it, uh, the first match is always straight into the middle. Match number one, we got Captain Marvel versus T2 Train Spot In. That's actually not a bad match to start things out. I was actually a fan of the Train Spot sequel. Not obviously not I didn't like as much as the original, but I had good feelings about it. Though I have to admit, I think very little of it these days. I would give Captain Marvel this nod. But it did give pause. It did give pause. So Captain Marvel beats train spying dose. Jeff, who lives at home. Oh, fitting. Um, <laughs> Not anymore. We all yeah, no, I literally, at one time in my life, uh, was living at home. When and that movie came out. When this movie came out. I'm sure I wasn't the only one who sent you text. Hey, bro, they made a movie about you. Yeah, no, it was very, uh, very clever. And <laughs> this movie um, gave me all the uh, motivation to get out of my mom's house. And this is a Duplass Brothers movie, who I'm actually a fan of. And I'm actually going to go with Jeff, who lives at home, over Captain Marvel here. Um, of course you'd go with the mumblecore. Of course, I love my mumblecore. Hump day for life, yo. All right, moving on. Captain Marvel up against... Ooh, drumroll please. I Married a Strange Person, the Bill Plimpton film. It is amazing. Uh, have you? Are you familiar with the works of Bill Plimpton? Yeah. He's a he's a fine animator. He made a movie called Alien Mutants, which is but is it like a feature length? It is a feature. We've actually had this debate uh, years ago because I made a list of my hundred favorite films of two thousands, and this one was on the list. And I think you won to debate it because you didn't think it was a feature film. It is a feature film. How long is it? It is uh, over an hour. I think it's seventy some odd minutes. Uh, I guess that barely qualifies. It's a mo- as much as uh, like Bambi <clears throat> qualified. Bambi's like sixty. Seven minutes. But I mean, that's different. It was back then. <laughs> it's different. They only had so much film. <laughs> there, was, there wasn't any kind of real. I mean, there was a standard, but it was very loose, especially for an animated film. I Married a Strange Person is a strange and wonderful journey. I still love it, and it's going to be Captain Marvel. Does it usually take this long? <laughs> mm, oh, here we go. Okay. Ooh, The Exorcist and Captain Marvel. Oh, that's what that's. You would think. You would think. Oh, that's an easy one. You would. You think? would think that would be an easy one. But you're not really a fan of horror. I no, I like horror, but I am not necessarily the biggest fan of The Exorcist. I will have you know, I appreciate what The Exorcist does, but I don't go back to it. I've seen it twice. I saw it once uh, at home to see what all the hullabaloo was about. Hubbub. And I saw it in the theaters when they re-released it. Mm. And I've So you ha- saw like the, the the version you've never seen? Yeah, the one where she gets a crab walk and shit. Or spider walk. What do they call it? Yeah, the spider walk. Spider walk, which is fine. I'm going Captain Marvel. It's more, mm. More, mm. more my cup of tea here. Un- unexpected. Well, yeah, because, you know, Jeff hates horror, apparently. Yes. <laughs> Moving on. We are aware of this. It's established. Captain <laughs> Marvel... Beats Exorcist up against the Brothers Bloom. You're uh, oh, the yeah, Rian Johnson fan. film, I which you are a fan. I find it's his, his weakest effort, but it, it has its moments. I don't disagree that it's probably his weakest, even when you have Last Jedi to compare it to. I, I like Last Jedi. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the new Star Wars movie. How do you feel about it? Well, they're bringing back J.J. Abrams, and you know, you know my feelings about J.J. Uh, Abrams. I think he's kind of a... A hack? Did you call him a hack? I didn't say that. You used that word. Oh, you were thinking it, though. 
I definitely was. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, Brothers Bloom is good. I recommend it. But I'm going to go Captain Marvel here. Though I feel like I already hear people go, oh, come on, man. All right. Captain Marvel's beating the, the Bloom Brothers. Moving on, moving on. Oh, there we go. Shrek, the original. <laughs> Boy, this movie has not aged in t- well with me. And I don't know if it has something to do with... Just, it just got I mean, oversaturated. I mean, it's so full of pop culture references is the problem. And a lot of it's very dated now. Yeah. Yeah. But, and I did enjoy Shrek when it came out. It was I think everybody did. Breath of Fresh Air. Everybody did. And yeah, because it was different from Pixar stuff. Yeah. Which I also liked. It felt like it was a little more edgy. A little edgier than yeah. the Disney How can you not be stuff? edgy with Smash Mouth on your soundtrack? That's what I say. Mm. Um, Valid points all around. So, but you know, I'll take uh, no, somebody no, once no, told I'll, me. I'll, I'll take that no doubt over the Smash Mouth soundtrack. And <laughs> okay, well here's a no brainer. <laughs> it truly really is. Stepmom with Julia Roberts and Susan Sarandon. My mom loves this movie. Oh man, I remember people were totally enamored with it. It's a terrible film. <laughs> I don't know why it's so high on my flick chart. Um, oh, you need, it you must a, have been a mistake. You need to bust it down. Susan Sarandon dies at the end of it. Oh, spoilers. Yeah. And then there's a scene where they, they all sing, like the kids and the mom, and everyone's happy. Julia Roberts uh, slumming it, but still at the peak of her powers. Yeah. Okay, Kevin Marvel's being stepmom. That's a, that's, a, that's a given. That's what you call a given in the business. Moving on, Captain Marvel up against Patriot Games. Mm-hmm. Harrison Ford playing Jack Ryan. Boy, that was uh, I. I really loved that movie when I was a kid. I, you know what? <laughs> Not a fan of the Jack Ryan series, mm. but but I'm also I'm the guy who hasn't seen Hunt for Red October, well, and yeah. I didn't actually see Clear and Present Danger. Though I always loved the trailer, I like the Clear and Present Danger. You always remember, how dare you bark orders to me? I'm the President of the United States. How dare you, sir? That will always <laughs> stick out in my mind as amazing. I didn't see that movie. <laughs> I did see the sum of all fears, I think. <laughs> I don't remember. The, the thing about these movies is Harrison Ford uh, utilizes his uh, finger point of death. When you, know, oh, like, like, you know he's serious. He means serious business when he points at you the way he points at you. You know, yeah. you know it's about to go down. And this is basically Harrison Ford during his era of like, he's in it, it's going to be a hit, no yeah, matter right, what it is. Right. He would test that theory a couple of years later <laughs> with movies like Random Hearts and Six Days, Seven Nights. But Patriot Games, big hit. It was good for what it was, but I will give the love to Captain Marvel, because oh, wow. Patriot Games is, uh, it is what it is. Uh, pa- Captain Marvel going up against, uh, oh, Center Stage! This is a, a teen film about dancers. Never seen it's it. It's surprisingly not horrible, mm. but it's not very good either. So, uh, Captain Marvel will, uh, beat Center Stage. Well, we're moving on to Back to the Beach. You remember this movie at all? No. Back oh, the, yeah, I like do. It's like a throwback yeah. of uh, beach yeah. films from the 1960s. Back to the Beach is amazing. It has Frankie Avalon and Annette Funicello. Doesn't Pee Wee Herman show up? Yeah, she, he yeah. sings uh, Everyone's Heard About the Bird. And he just comes in to sing it, and then he goes away. <laughs> And that honestly, the reason I watched the movie is because Pee Wee Herman was in it for literally three minutes. <laughs> uh, it was an HBO staple, and uh, it was it had fun with its uh, kind of its beach blanket bingo tropes, if you will. I saw it maybe ten years back. It's fun on a nostalgia slant, but it's not something I'm looking to return to anytime soon. So I will give Captain Marvel love here. All right, so it looks like this is the last match. Captain Marvel versus uh, Paul Newman in The Verdict, which is a Sidney Lumet movie. Not a huge uh, courtroom drama guy, but as far as those types of movies goes, this is one of the better ones. When uh, Sidney Lumet, Lumet. Lumet or Lumet, whatever, died, I did like a, a, a watch of a lot of movies I had missed of his, and this was one of them. I and, believe I watched it with you. Yeah, and I came away I was like wow that was really good yeah it is a fine film and uh, I will take it over Captain Marvel and number 1433 out of 3818 films so it puts her right below the verdict with uh, Paul Newman mm. right above the boy and the beast let's look at the Marvel chart okay let's see where it ranks on my Marvel chart here we go. Where, 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 where would you suspect it would land on the Marvel chart? Probably the uh, the bottom quarter. Oh, you'd be surprised. 
So Captain America the First Avenger is currently at my number one. That's pretty good. I mean, I'm not too far off from that. My personal favorite is still the First Avenger. Okay. And as you can say, Marvel movies only seem to get so far on my list because that my highest one's at 586. I, Avengers Infinity War 2, Iron Man at 3, First Avengers at 4, Guardians of the Galaxy 5, Civil War at 6, Spider-Man Homecoming 7, Guardians of the Galaxy 1 2, 8, Avengers Age of Ultron 9, Doctor Strange at 10, Winter Soldier 11. Winter Soldier is interesting because a lot of people would rank that much higher. Some yeah. people rank that as the number one. Captain Marvel in my number 13. Well, oh, even Ragnarok, I think people would rank that much higher. Uh, Incredible. Yeah. Hulk is, that's fine. 16. Wow, Black Panther, you have really low. Yeah, I'm a bloody racist. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not worse than Thor movies. <laughs> so that's... So wait, so my 21 would probably be Ant-Man and Wasp, I'm going to assume if there's 21 movies. Well, it's right there. December oh, no, no, maybe not. So what's the worst? So the You never saw Iron Man 3. Ah, so I legit have my top 20. So yeah, a couple Thors. You know what? Black Panther is too low. <laughs> you may have to redo that Thor, one. Thor is too... Uh, Ragnarok is too low, admittedly. Captain Marvel... Captain Marvel feels about right. It's 13. Though Iron Man 2 is admittedly probably too high. <laughs> yes, it's definitely too high. <laughs> so. 13 out of 20. In the Marvel scheme of things, probably could be higher, but its position on the overall chart, I am totally fine with. Cool. Okay, so we flicked your chart. We, fl uh, I know. I feel completely and utterly satisfied by a, a good old-fashioned chart flicking. So uh, congratulations, Captain Marvel, to make my uh, bevy of uh, fine films that I've seen in my life so what's next on tap well you know what there's three major releases this week are they really major well i mean they're <laughs> they're the ones that will be seen at your local multiplex and those movies are captive state which is the uh, movie by the guy who directed the first time the apes remix the rise this is like a space alien movie where you see both sides i think i know nothing about it you have five feet apart which is a teen drama about a young lady with cystic fibrosis we're definitely not five feet apart no well, this is more like two <laughs> so if we had cystic fibrosis we'd be killing each other oh no I, oh, I, think I, I, I based that on what i saw I, in the movie i think i did see a trailer for that movie <laughs> i need new lungs but i love you <laughs> yeah so i'm willing to uh hang out with you Sick kids movies, Sick man. kids. Yeah, they're the thing. You know, I saw The Fault in Our Stars, and I thought that was lovely, if not tragic. Was uh, that the beginning of the Sick Kids? I believe it was. So it's a thing. It's uh, I believe it's based off a, a young adult oh, book. Yeah, of course, of course. Not going to see that one either. And then the third one is Wonderpock. Nickelodeon Studios apparently still makes animated films. And this one looks bad. So, I mean, you're not going to see that one. No. But but you, don't you put that up for frick charters to decide on? I no <laughs> no because I won't. I'm, you're not going to force me to watch something I don't. I thought see. the whole idea of this. No, was... not at all, oh, man. Oh. oh, I will give them options, but I am not. I mean, I'm not a masochist. Okay, all right. I would trust they would not pick Wonder Park if I did uh, give them that option. So, but I will have options. In fact, I have four. Mm. options because our local uh, art art house theater tower is getting not one not two but three new films this week i see so you're gonna put captive state in a running against those other three i maybe oh not even that <laughs> i don't know you know what uh i i reserve the right to uh <laughs> Uh, remove or add uh, any movies at any time. But I will tell you the four movies that I'm definitely going to put in for consideration okay. for uh, people to vote for me to watch and eventually flick chart next week. We start with Climax. Are you familiar with Climax? That's the new Gaspar No movie. And it's in movie theaters. Isn't that amazing? Because uh, I think it's his most... Um, accessible? Accessible of all. Do you movies. know what it's about? It, what else? Whatever Gaspar Noe movie is always about. May I, may I read the... <laughs> Go ahead. When members of a dance troupe are lured to an empty school, drug-laced sangria, sangria uh, causes their jubilant rehearsal to descend into a dark and explosive nightmare as they try to survive the night and find out who's responsible before it's too late. It's like Step Up. Is that actually playing at the Tower? It's not only just playing at the Tower. It's also playing at one other multiplex. I believe in the uh, the suburb of Roseville. Roseville has it? Roseville <laughs> has Climax. 
How can you? You're gonna see. Oh, this. I'm gonna see it. I'm not gonna depend on any flick charters to tell me to go see it. I'll go see it. That's up for consideration. Okay. Giant little ones. It's a coming of age movie mm. with two gay young males. Frankie Winter and Ballas Ballas Cole. All right. Kind of hate his name. <laughs> have been best friends since childhood. They are high school royalty, handsome, stars of the swim team, and popular with girls. They live a perfect teenage life until the night of Frankie's epic 17th birthday party when Frankie and Ballas are involved in an unexpected incident that changes their lives forever. But look at that poster. <laughs> so much longing. So much that is longing. A, that is a young man longing for another young man. That other young man seems relatively oblivious to the longing of young Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> so that's up for consider. I like a good coming of age film, mm -hmm. and now that uh, people are obviously more comfortable releasing um, movies where uh, our protagonists may be gay. Um, so we're going to start seeing these movies trickle out more, you know, back then when Brokeback Mountain used to be an event, now it's... It's a d big deal, yeah. Not, now it's, uh, you know, times have changed and uh, people are obviously more comfortable uh, getting out to the theaters and supporting these films. And apparently it's pretty good. So that is for consideration. The other one... Is Ruben Brandt Collector? Are you familiar with this one? It's an animated film. I kind of heard about this. It is a very, very interesting looking film. I saw the trailer. It's a, essentially a story about a psychiatrist who has a roster of criminal patients who and must exercise some of their strange demons. What stands out clearly is the animation. It looks very unlike you know most animated fare that we we get in theaters this, these days. Where's that playing at? It is at our local art house theater. The Tawa. The Tawa. Uh, Millerad Christic is the man who directed it, so I'm assuming he is not from these sparks. But it looks cool. Uh, interesting premise. And uh, that is also up for consideration. And finally, oh yes, Nancy Drew and the Hidden Staircase. This one's for the kids. Wow, it's funny how I haven't even heard any, any rumblings about it. Well, it's a uh, game well received. It stars Sophia Lillis, who uh, known by most people at this point as the girl from It. Yeah. Um, but now she's Nancy Drew. I remember uh, Emma. Who's the other one? Julia Roberts' niece. Emma Roberts. Emma Roberts. She played Nancy Drew a few years back. Didn't see that one. It sounds like they're always trying to get these Nancy Drew movies off the ground. Wasn't uh, Abigail Breslin uh, Nancy? No, Drew? she was Kit Kitteridge. Oh, uh, sorry. Kit I Kitteridge. saw that one with my mom. <laughs> And it was pleasant. Or there was Harriet the Spy. Oh, yeah. Even you probably saw that one. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't have kids. Animated movies, you could argue, are kids' movies. But a lot of times, those movies are very much made with the intent of being also uh, watchable by the, the parents or Fair the enough. adults going to take those kids. I feel like live-action kids' movies, though, have are like, more juvenile. Have no regard for the, for the, the parent or the adult that might be a company. No, because it, I mean, but there are exceptions to the rules. I've seen uh, a, a handful of really decent films. Needless to say, if this movie wins, I'm dragging my niece whether she wants to see it or not. <laughs> yeah, you have to come with me. It, well, she's the perfect age range for some. Uh, she's. 12. I, have, I have a feeling Climax will win. And that's one that we could literally talk about next mm -hmm, week. Because mm -hmm. you love your Gasper now. I do. I do. I've only seen Irreversible, and it's. It's, it's it's a movie. It's it, it is <laughs> that is an understatement. It is an experience, yeah. not necessarily a positive yeah. one. Into the Void is also quite an experience. Never seen it. Uh, I did not see his movie right after that, which is called Love. That's the one with the hardcore sex in it. Yes, um, I believe it is available to stream on Netflix. So that might be something I watch before going to see Climax. So yeah, uh, well there you go. You have four movies to choose from, and it, these will be posted on the uh, the Flick Chart. Flick uh, Chart on the Facebook. Uh, it's called Flick Charters. It's a group. If you want to be uh, essentially added, I will add you because I have that power. Just reference hashtag flick my chart and Jeff will know exactly. It's like, I want my say. I need Jeff to see the Nancy Drew movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You right. might get some trolls that will uh, go on there. And you know, if Captive State and Five Feet Apart or Wonder Park uh, make it into the pool, I'm not saying it's not an impossibility, but I don't want to see any of those movies. <laughs> not even a little bit. All right. All right, that's it. That We're done? Tell All them right. to flick your chart. Flick my chart. <laughs> <laughs> Do it!